With its living roof, this manufacturing plant near Chichester was designed to blend modestly into the Sussex countryside. But the cars assembled here are among the boldest personal statements money can buy. This is our brand new model. This is Wraith. Rolls-Royce is very much something that the customer creates themselves. They commission it, we hand build it. Every car is as unique as its owner's fingerprint. Let your imagination go wild. John Lennon's imagination ran wild in 1965. Ted Meacham's car is more subtle, but he's no less enthusiastic about his latest Rolls Royce. How many Rolls Royces have you uh, had in your time? Oh, uh, seven or eight, I suppose. And this is a Corniche from 2002. When I was a young man, uh, I had a Mini, and I got in the Mini and I used to grab the steering wheel to try and make it go faster. Now I'm an old man, I sit in my Rolls Royce and it carries me forward. It's called wafting. Not only is it a very impressive motor car, but you are aware of the excellence of the engineering. That excellence is the legacy of Henry Royce, the engineer who in 1904 formed a partnership with a wealthy motoring enthusiast called Charles Rolls. Educated at Eton, Rolls had plenty of money and all the right connections to be the publicist and salesman in the company. He was a pioneering aviator, the first to make a non-stop double crossing of the English Channel. Unfortunately, he was also the first Briton to be killed in powered flight when the tail fell off his plane during a display over Bournemouth. Royce continued to build the company, but he moved to the coast for the good of his health. He spent the last 15 years of his life in West Wittering and brought a team of designers with him, using a Rolls-Royce Phantom as his personal transport. Today, his outbuildings have been converted into a house. Henry's workshop is now a garage, and it still houses a Rolls-Royce. You can see from the plaques on the wall and the rosettes, that's all my activities with the club since I joined in 1998. And uh, it's been a very happy time. This is his workbench. There's a leather strap here with little loops in it were poking tools into when he was working here, mending the vicar's bicycle, no doubt. <laughs> I often think about, I wonder whether Henry Royce is looking down from above and saying, well done David, you've got a nice car there. Wondering whether he knew it and was involved in its fabrication. The cars were built in Derby, but many were brought to West Wittering for Royce's approval. And this stretch of road, known as the Burdham Strait, is where he would test them out. There wouldn't have been a speed camera then. Henry, by this time Sir Henry, often walked on the local beach, talking over ideas with his designers. He turned his attention to aircraft engines and would sketch ideas in the sand. I think he probably conceived the R engine here. It went into the winning aeroplane, uh, which won the Snyder Trophy, which, if you like, the racetrack is here between us and the Isle of Wight. Any country which won the Schneider Trophy three times could keep the cup forever. The political climate of the early 30s made competition fierce. But RJ Mitchell's Supermarine S6, fitted with Sir Henry's R engine, triumphed. That design was taken forward for the Merlin engine, which some say saved Great Britain when the Merlin was put in into the, uh, the Spitfire and the Hurricane and uh, Lancaster bomber. Sir Henry worked until he died in 1933, the day after sketching a new type of shock absorber. His motto lives on in the current company headquarters. Take the best that exists and make it better. You can never have too much perfection in your job. You can always make something better. Just a little tweak might, might just do the trick. 